welcome and thanks for joining our webinar today where we're excited to discuss accelerating data understanding with natural language. My name is Brian Zwallen and I'm the SVP of customer success at ARIA and I'll be your host for this event. So our agenda today will kick off with a little context around who we are as individuals and organization and we'll discuss our solution to empower your organization with actionable insights to facilitate faster decision making. And we'll touch on our tech suite that shows the various ways you can deploy our solution that truly scales. And we'll jump into a live action demo in a Tableau dashboard, obviously. And then finally, we'll close out with some time for Q&A. So first, let me introduce my colleague, Douglas Kirk. Doug is our training and development specialist at ARIA. He works with us at developing the various success plan courses that are available to our customers and partners at ARIA Academy. You may have seen him on some of our Getting Started videos, so you'll quickly become familiar with his voice. Doug, welcome to the program. Thank you, Brian, and welcome to everyone. All right, so let's talk a little bit about ARIA. So ARIA is a recognized global leader in natural language generation, or NLG. We specialize in extracting the insights from complex data sources and then communicating the knowledge that's learned through natural language. Our research center is located in Aberdeen, Scotland, with our primary business office in the United States and regional offices worldwide. And our chief scientists, Dr. Ehud Ryder and Dr. Yaji Shopata, are two of the leading figures internationally in the NLG space. And they mentor a team of PhDs in artificial intelligence disciplines, such as NLG and data science. And ARIA NLG is an artificial intelligence technology in that it replicates the human process of expertly analyzing and communicating insights about your data. So using our solution provides your organization with accurate, consistently excellent, non-biased commentary at machine speed and massive scale. In a recent Gartner report, they state that data storytelling helps decision makers engage with data and analytics by delivering insights in compelling forms and 75 percent of stories will be automatically generated through technologies like nlg using aria nlg you develop or you deliver i should say real the actionable insights without the need for interpretation and so you gain efficiencies through the automation of analysis and writing of reports which right is going to free up your valuable employees from doing those kinds of robotic tasks and you achieve consistently excellent, again, non-biased commentary with the ability to scale and then democratize the knowledge throughout the organization. And with our out-of-the-box capabilities, you'll see a quick return on your investment. Our customers and partners invent all kinds of ways to harness the power of NLG. And this slide speaks from some of our customers and the value that they've realized using ARIA NLG. So the BBC says in a one-click process, they were able to take raw data and automatically generate new stories at speed and scale. And BNY Mellon significantly reduced the amount of time writing reports, freeing their valuable employees to have more time interacting with customers. And Ernst & Young provides more accurate and consistently excellent reports for their customers. And you can navigate to our website by typing in aria.com everywhere, and you'll find another list of use cases from customers and partners. So if you mouse over these tiles, you'll see their direct quotes. Now at ARIA, we have a vision of NLG everywhere. And in order for us to empower organizations to expand their use, we've developed several channels where NLG can be accessed. And it's all supported by ARIA NLG Studio that sits on top of the stack. So for instance, if you're using our custom extension in the BI dashboard, so whether that's in Tableau or Power BI, or typical click or macro strategy, your data is gonna flow from that dashboard through Studio, which will analyze the data, and then it passes the commentary right into the dashboard next to your other visuals. So just in a few moments, we're gonna look at ARIA NLG apps, which gives you the ability to create narratives without code. So you'll simply select a few dimensions and measures, click a few configuration buttons, and select what types of analysis you're interested in. That's what Doug's gonna reveal. We'll also look at ARIA Answers that takes this a step further. So if you're looking to drill down even more than the provided narrative, you can simply type a question and it will return an answer in natural language. Now ARIA Connect allows your developers or partners to connect our solution with many other systems, including your own bespoke solution. And ARIA for RPA or Robotic Process Automation allows you to build an end-to-end -end solution where you potentially pull 
data from disparate systems and maybe pass insights on that data to any presentation layer, including email alerts. And there are 1.1 billion Microsoft Office installs, which equals to a lot of Excel users. So with RA for Excel, you'll be able to augment complex analysis with commentary directly embedded in the worksheet. Now the add-ins uh, for these dashboards and Excel are available today for you to download and try. So just navigate to aria.com slash technology hyphen suite, as you can see up in the, the URL bar up there. And you can certainly try these out today. Just one other note, I'm gonna talk about Studio for a moment. Uh, this diagram shows how flexible the architecture is and the simplistic approach of connecting through RESTful APIs. So the data will pass through this RESTful API securely uh, through a secure channel. The studio is going to do some analysis on that. It's going to generate the text and pass it back down to your presentation layer of choice. You can see, you know, there are plenty of types of uh, use cases we could do with this. All right, so that's uh, all I wanted to touch on here. I think we'll get to the exciting stuff now, Doug. How about if I make you the presenter? Okay, great, thank you. All right, first off, I wanted to show where you can, of course, uh, get Tableau. So if you uh, go to navigate to aria.com slash bi dash Tableau, right up here in my top left corner, you'll get to our uh, page for the application. And as you scroll down, you will see the option to download it. So this will take you to our documentation and that's where you can start your free trial. And then if you're looking to download the actual dashboard that I'm gonna be demoing today, you'll see that right here. So you can look at the, the showcase workbook. So I'm gonna start um, displaying this, which is on this tab right over here. And I'm gonna go full screen. Great. So we are looking at a Tableau dashboard. It has several visualizations over here on the left, some dynamic KPIs going across the top, and several tabs going across the top, each one of these telling a different story and a different perspective. What sets this dashboard apart from other dashboards is of course the RE NLG narrative over to the right. It provides additional insights into the underlying data in natural language but it was not generated by a data analyst. It was generated by Aria for Tableau at machine speed. And this NLG narrative was created without using any code. So this is the first Tableau webinar that uses Aria Connect version 3.0, which provides a user-friendly interface for Aria apps. It provides new functionality over its prior version 2.2, and is very easy to use. So we're excited to introduce both Connect 3.0 and Aria for Tableau as we continue to enhance our product line. All you need to do to create a narrative is basically walk through a configuration wizard. It provides value in minutes. So this truly is disruptive technology. Now you'll be able to choose from eight analytical narratives that you can customize to describe your data. Each narrative has options to control the content. So we're gonna focus on how you can customize them and when to choose each type. So here I'm going to display the eight narratives. So here they are. So each narrative uh, provides the opportunity to describe your data in different ways. So if you have uh, a chart, you can use one of these three, describe a pie chart, bar chart, or a line chart. And these three narratives don't, act, don't have to only describe a chart. They provide excellent analytics. So as you try each one of these narratives, if you like how it looks, by all means, use it. Uh, the first one is a very popular one, descriptive statistics, provides a great drill down capability. You'll see variance narratives for time-based or target-based. And these two are somewhat new trend and ranking analysis. So we're gonna, describe, we're gonna take a look at all three of these. Um, but keep in mind that our goal is to generate the types of narratives that businesses need to immediately provide value. So this list is gonna continue to grow as we listen to our customers. So let's take a look at them in action. Now we're gonna view Tableau in two different interfaces today. So here we are viewing the Tableau dashboard in a browser. We'll also take a look at it through the Tableau desktop client. So I will switch back and forth between the two. And we'll start off with the first tab, Explore NLG Apps. 
Now this tab displays several charts and then an out of the box narrative to the right that provides deeper understanding. The descriptive statistics narrative identifies the product that contributed the most, and you'll see it right here, Karadian. It then summarizes actual sales for each product, as you can see, identifying the main contributing country. And then it drills down into the actual sales by country. So here we see a new heading and identifies the significant product. So you're getting a significant amount of detail here. This level of detail that's provided cannot be grasped just by looking at graphs, and it would take a considerable amount of time to generate. So the goal is not just to see numbers in a dashboard, but instead it is to understand the main contributors to those numbers, identify trends, and provide valuable insights into performance. So you can see the, the value that it provides. I'm gonna swap over to the uh, client. And as you can see, it's basically the, the same dashboard, but this is where you would actually make changes. So what I wanna do first is take a look at, you know, how this works and the backend data. So if I'm in Tableau here, I'm gonna go over to the data menu and here you can see the data source. And if I choose view data, here it loads. You can see that the backend data control uh, has 2,191 rows. So that is the data that's being used to display this narrative. And it's basically just a wizard that you walk through. You uh, load up your data, walk through the wizard, and tell it what narrative you want to, you want to uh, display, and then how to display it. But this also provides the ability to drill down. So here it says that the most a uh, significant contributor was Karadian. So if I want to drill down into Karadian, I can click on Karadian over here, and this is the, uh, the visual that was used to create this narrative right over here. So if I give it a click, now you can see that it drills down, and now it's focusing only on Karadian, not all the products, not all the countries, a focus on Karadian. So now, if I wanted to see, whoops, one click again, and see the data that's used for just this narrative over to the right now, you can see here is a summary, those are my countries, and there is the full data. So rather than the 2,191 records, as I drill down, you can see it's on 298 records. So that gives you a little insight into how it's using the data. Out of 2,191 records, now when I drill down, it's focusing only on 298 rows. And keep in mind, up in the top right-hand corner here is a filter. So I have three years of data available. I only have 2020 selected, and then I draw down into a specific product. So there's not additional narratives here. It's dynamic. When I focus on Karadian, the narrative updates. And then I click outside of Karadian, and it goes back to the original configuration. So now, real quick, I just want to take a look at how this was done. So let me move this out of the way. Up here in the top right-hand corner, you're going to see three ellipses. And when I give it a click, you have the ability to switch between NLG apps and RE answers, which we're going to take a look at, and the ability to create custom narratives. Not really, uh, we won't really dive into that in this webinar today, but if you want to build custom narratives, you can, of course, display them in your dashboard as well. So when I click on NLG apps, this shows you the design of it. And it is you know, pretty straightforward to, uh, to go through. You name your data source, and this was my data source here, and these are the fields. Two dimensions, product and country, and the measure that's being evaluated is actual sales. If I go into the options, then you just have options to control how does this display. You can choose the ranking, how, in what order does this display in. And then down at the bottom, the verbosity of the report. So this report actually was told to tell me everything. It's looking at every dimension. So if I change that to important things and click generate, now you can see how easy it is to change that narrative. Again, not another narrative looking around in the background. All we do is we just change the configuration and Studio, which is in the background that Brian discussed earlier, will reconfigure that narrative, rebuild it, and it's analyzing that data. So this gives you a little insight into how it's working. 
So next I'm gonna go and move on to my next sheet. I'm gonna switch back to the browser version because this will most likely be your presentation layer. So I'm gonna navigate over to analyze sales performance. So now you've seen a little bit as to how these narratives are built. So now we're just gonna take a look at some of the other narratives that are available. We've seen the descriptive statistics uh, narrative. That was, the, that was the prior one, but here's another example of it where we're analyzing profit. Um, and you can see that departmental is the main contributor and then it drills down into that market and identifies Karadian and Ointmo as the main contributors within that market. So this narrative is based on this visual. The next two are variance narratives that compare and contrast values. The first one is a time-based variance. Um, so it's complementing a bar chart visualization right above it. The narrative contrasts quarter three versus quarter four for actual sales in 2020. So keep in mind that the year that's being utilized. It then identifies neutrality and Karadian as the main contributors to the decline in actual sales in this case between these two timeframes, and it identifies Ointmo as the offset. So it identifies you know, which two products were really the contributors to the decline in sales, and then offset as well. So again, a dynamic uh, narrative that's provided just using a wizard. The next one is a target-based variance, and it's analyzing the variance between two distinct measures, in this case, actual sales versus target sales. So of course a product manager will wanna know whether sales targets are being reached and then drill down into the details. This narrative uses a feature called the top, top option. So when we talk about, well, what is the variance and who were the contributors to them, you can specify how many to display. So Karadian, Routine, and Camoweed were identified as the three main contributors. You can use the option of a hard-coded number like that, three, or you can use a percentage, which is a little more calculated, a little more AI. So we're gonna take a look at that in the narrative that we're gonna build from scratch. And then you can see that within this narrative, this is uh, using market as a dimension, even though that's not provided in the chart above. So as you can see, the narrative provides additional insight into the chart. The chart doesn't even mention markets. So this one does, it dives down deeper. Next. Let's take a look at analyze trends and ranking. So two more narratives, and these are the somewhat new ones and they are excellent. So we're gonna analyze actual sales in both narratives. The first one is the trend analysis app. Now this app generates a narrative that analyzes the changes in a trend, actual sales, of a specific measure over time. And then it highlights significant shifts and can drill down through multiple dimensions. So you can actually add several dimensions into this to provide additional detail, additional insights. Um, so this, narr this narrative shows the actual sales by month. So here are your months within 2020 and identifies three trends that should be analyzed. So here you see October to December representing this line right here. And then September to October, and then August to September. And it dives down into them, provides insight into um, what were the contributors to that change in trend. And then also what's important is, well, what exactly is the trend? So there's a, there's a, uh, a factor within the configuration of this narrative called the trend change percentage. You have the ability to change that yourself. And by decreasing that uh, value, you will actually identify more trends. So it gives you that flexibility to determine, well, how does it determine that trend? You identify it with a percentage figure. And that's again in the, in the configuration you would see here. And this of course would be very useful for a product manager who might work in a seasonal market. Knowing the months of high volatility will help identify months where production might or should be increased to meet increased demand before it happens. So a trend analysis does that for you. Next to it is a ranking analysis. This app generates an analysis of changes in the ranking of dimensions. So here you see the, uh, the dimension is country with actual sales over time as they relate to a specific measure 
of course, here is actual sales. Now, just by looking at this, um, you, it may be actually difficult to identify, well, which one of these countries was the, big, was the um, consistent uh, best performer? It's actually, as you, as you read it, it's the United States. But it might be a little hard to decipher looking at this. So that's what this ranking analysis does. It takes a look at this value and then evaluates it very quickly. So if you imagine you're talking about products and you have 100 products, you know, this chart might be very hard to decipher. So this ranking analysis does this for you, identifies, well, which ones were the significant contributors. And the, uh, the narrative that's provided, this is somewhat concise. What you could do is you could add another dimension to this, maybe drill down into market, drill down into product as well, when you talk about this ranking. And then keep in mind that you have the ability to um, change this narrative. So I'm focusing on 2020. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap that over to 2019. Turn that on and then turn off 2020. Now you have a completely different narrative and it analyzes it for you. So now you can see for this one, uh, the lead ranking, again, the United States, um, but it does that analysis for you. You don't have to decipher it yourself. That's what the narrative does for you. So it does a great job. And when you're looking at your own data, that's when you're really gonna see the value of this. This is uh, obviously when, you, when you're looking at your data, it's really gonna hit home. Next is describe charts. Now I mentioned earlier that these uh, chart analytics do an excellent job of basically complementing a chart that's above it. But keep in mind that these um, narratives are excellent on their own, particularly this one, which is the bar chart narrative and the line chart narrative, which of course incorporates time. This was actually a narrative that was used to develop several of the others. So again, they're excellent. First one is the uh, pie chart. It performs an analysis of one measure, in our case, cost of goods sold, by one dimension, which is market. Uh, and then displays the percentages and explains any significant outliers. So this is important to a sales manager that might be examining the markets of their products. Next to it is a bar chart, and it's analyzing actual sales over combinations of dimensions. So you have products at the bottom and markets across the top, providing analytics on any variances. So the narrative provides detail for the main contributors, which are departmental, brand store, and online, and then drills down into the products within those three markets. So the narrative describes uh, sales by market, but let's say we then wanted to change that and look at it from a product perspective. So I'm in the, uh, the web client here, so I'm gonna switch over to the, uh, the desktop and go to the Describe Charts tab. So as I mentioned just before, this is uh, focusing on market when it does the uh, analysis. So I'm just gonna change the configuration a little bit. So I'm gonna go into NLG apps, show off how easy this is to do. Here are my dimensions. Market is listed first. All you have to do is change the order. Go into options. This is where you choose the verbosity of the report and I keep it at important things. And now as I click generate, the focus of the narrative has changed. Now as a product manager, I might say, hey, now this relates to me better. So that's how easy it is to change the narrative. Now the whole narrative is focused on product. Then next to that, we of course have the, uh, the line chart. It analyzes measures, in our case profit, over combinations of dimensions, month and market, over time. So this line chart, Narrative, uh, narrative explains profit over the months in 2020 using a trend analysis and a time variance analysis that explains the min, main contributors and the offsets. So those are my main contributors. Here are my offsets. And it even shows correlations, which means markets that are moving in a similar pattern. So uh, does an excellent job. And again, keep in mind that these uh, these three narratives are great at describing a chart, but if you find that the narrative style works for you, it doesn't have to summarize a chart. It can work on its own. Picture these charts 
um, not even there, and you're just using this narrative, it does an excellent job. Okay, so I've done a bit of talking here about the uh, existing ones. What we're gonna do on the next tab is configure one from scratch. So I want you to see how these are built. So this tab, configure NLG apps, has a narrative over to the right, and I'm going to remove it, and we're gonna create a narrative from scratch. So let's remove from dashboard. So now I have some real estate over to the right. Let's get started. So down in the bottom left-hand corner under objects, you have the option of tiled versus floating. I'm gonna choose floating so that my placeholder, I can put it exactly where I want. So I'm gonna double click on extension and navigate to my extensions. And here is the .trex file. That's what you need to get this started. Click OK, and I've got my placeholder for my narrative. So I'm just going to resize this a little bit and put it over to the right. Not bad. And a little bit of a perfectionist. OK, and now all I need to do is log in. First things first. Um, the three different uh, apps are grayed out because the very first thing you need to do is configure your data. So I'm gonna click on configure data and what you're gonna see over up, up at the top is a listing of data sources. This list is the same as over here. Now, some of these visuals can be used for a narrative. So this one is actually the actual sales by country. This one is great because data for narrative is a sheet that we created that contains all of the dimensions and all of the uh, measures. So as I click it, you can see all of them appear. Now I might toggle that on if I were setting this aside for ARIA answers, where you can actually ask questions to all of your data. But in this particular case, I'm gonna be a little bit more concise. I don't need all of the fields. So I'm gonna turn that off and I'm just gonna designate the fields that I want in my narrative. Now the narrative that I'm building is going to contrast target sales versus actual sales. I also want to include a few measures. So I'm going to add country, market, and product. And then my measures will be actual sales and target sales. Okay, so I'm going to click OK. Those are the fields that I want to include in my narrative. Now you can see these three light up. I'm going to go into NLG apps and we'll configure the narrative. So here is that listing that we saw earlier, the eight narrative types. So as you get comfortable with it, you'll know which ones that you, uh, you want to select. In my case, I'm going to choose target-based variants so I can contrast two measures. Here are my dimensions. Now this is your opportunity to configure each field. Um, under dimensions, this is a country. So I'm going to specify that it is a location. And you can give it an alias if you like. I'm just going to put it in lowercase, and you'll see why as we look at the narrative. Um, just keep in mind that in many cases, um, the language that's used is case sensitive. So I'm going to keep that as market there, and then product. This gives you an opportunity to change how it displays um, con contrasted to the back end data. If it was capitalized in the back end data, you can display it however you want using an alias. Actual sales is going to display in currency, in US dollars. And here is your opportunity to change whether an increase in this value is perceived as good, bad, or neutral. Of course, it's good for actual sales. If I were using something like cost of goods sold or expenses, I would of course choose bad, and that would change the language that's used in the narrative. So now I'm gonna do the same for target sales. It's going to display in currency using US dollars, and an increase is good. Clicking next, here's my last step. Now, this is a target based variance narrative. So, here is your opportunity to determine how uh, or how many entities should be displayed in that narrative. So, the uh, one I showed earlier had three in the time based variance, three entities. Here's your opportunity to change that. So, if I choose three, it's going to look at what was my first measure that was selected. If I click preview, it was, it was country. So there is France, 
and then there's China, and then there's Mexico. And that's choosing the top three option. So you can specify how many entities to display and based on the dimensions that you chose, country was listed first. Your other option is to choose coverage. This is a little bit more calculated. It's a measure or a percentage that you can utilize. So the higher the number this is, the more you're going to see. So if I chose 73 and update my preview, all right, I'm getting, looks like three, France, China, Mexico. And then if I go back to this and choose a smaller number, preview updates, and my, hmm, <laughs> there you go. I need an actual higher number. Preview updated. Let me just click this. I'm gonna increase that a little bit more. It all depends on your numbers. Let me click generate. Okay, two. All right, so now you can see how the how those numbers work. Uh, the the uh, second option that I chose is percentage based. So you do have to know you you have to know your data fairly well. But that gives you an idea of how you can create a narrative and the options that you have to control the content. So go into that uh, the uh, the wizard and you have options in those screens to control the order of this. So uh, the, we actually used country as the uh, dimension that was first. And you have options in terms of the, ver of the verbosity of the report. You actually have several options. So actually, I'm going to take a look at what are those options. Here we go. Your options to control the narrative yourself. You can prioritize the field listing, putting one field over another. Choose the narrative type. You have eight. Change the verbosity of the report. Where available, you use that top option or coverage option, like we saw in the variance narratives. Where available, change the attribute order or choose let us decide, and that was in the descriptive statistics narrative. You can indicate a unique unit of measure. So I chose US dollars. If you're using something, uh, maybe you're a university you want, and you're talking about the number of students, you can use students as the unit. It would use that unit of measure. And then finally, you can talk to your sales representative about obtaining a studio account where you can learn how to build your own custom narrative in studio. So those are some of your options to, uh, to control the content of your narrative. Okay, so we did configure. Finally, we'll take a look at exploring ARIA answers. ARIA answers allows you to have a conversation with your data. So you can actually um, ask a question. So if, if you wanna dive deeper into your data, um, you can ask a question here. Also keep in mind that you have the ability on all of these tabs to switch back and forth between ARIA answers and the narrative itself. We just dedicated one sheet to ARIA answers and, and put it on one, on one uh, tab. So now I can start asking questions and I do wanna keep in mind the time frame that I have selected. So I'm gonna add 2020 and 2021. So it's available for questions. And it also allows me to ask a question like, what are my sales this month? When I, when I include the current year. So which product? Now product is a dimension that's known in our data source, so it appears in the drop-down menu. Which product had the highest actual sales? That's a measure that's known, so it's in the menu. You can click it or press the tab key. In quarter one of 2021, you don't have to type the question mark, it's assumed but this will, this will add it into the conversation. It then does an analysis. In quarter one, the top product was Camoweed, accounting for 46% of actual sales. Always keep in mind that any query that you ask must contain at least one measure. How about what are actual sales month on month? So in this case, and this is called a temporal variance query, it needs to know, well, what is the current month? and the previous month as well. Then it does an analysis of the data and provides your response in regular language. Actual sales decreased by 1.99 million or 33% this month compared to last month. So of course we're in May, it's comparing April and May. 
So knowing this, uh, that it was that it decreased, I might want to dive into that deeper. What drove actual sales versus target sales for Camoweed, which was identified as the uh, biggest contributor last month? All right, in April, which was last month, uh, actual sales for Camoweed were higher than target sales. So that's important for a product manager to know. Well, we, we actually hit the targets. It was driven by the UK, France, and Mexico, and it provides two countries as the offset. So now you can see that it really provides that opportunity to ask questions and really dive into your data. A few things about the linguistics that's, that's used, you'll notice that when it refers to a country like the United States or the United Kingdom, it knows that this one needs the word the, and France and Mexico did not. So it's using the proper linguistics every time it refers to an entity like that. Nouns and verbs are always inflected properly, like the product was versus the products were. So that, of course, is always taken into account. So this is a level of expectation that you can have when you're using RENLG. It will conjugate words properly so that you're, as your data changes, the proper linguistics are also used. Finally, we have the Explore Custom Narratives tab. This one is great because um, you actually have the ability to interact with the uh, dashboard a little bit. Here we have a few graphics, and then up here we can analyze the data based on country. I'm just waiting for this uh, analysis to finish. You can look at it by country, then you can change the whole narrative and change the focus of it. Maybe look by product instead. So you have three options here. There's not three different narratives here. We have the ability to, uh, to actually change the focus of the narrative. So it allows you to save real estate in your dashboard by providing this kind of interactivity. And then you have the ability to change the threshold too. We talked about threshold with our variance narratives before. So um, this particular narrative um, displays a custom narrative. So this one is customized. So this one's not out of the box. So we want to show off the ability to create a custom narrative. Um, and it's contrasting August to September sales variance with a trend analysis for September down below. Let's see, yep. Yep, there's September. Um, and it has the ability to change the content, so the product, country, and market option, as well as the threshold. Um, so this allows the author to preserve real estate on the, on the dashboard, and it combines um, sales performance and a trend analysis by country for two time periods within this customized narrative. So things to keep in mind, uh, dashboards can be built from many kinds of data, to provide insight into many types of businesses. Keep in mind that these narratives and RE answers are really going to shine when it's analyzing your data. And also that RE NLG for Tableau is also available on mobile devices. So I'm going to show off this. This is the, uh, the dashboard as viewed on my iPhone. So you do, of course have the ability to uh, display this in the browser as well. Okay, um, we saw the page that displays uh, how to get it. We want to point out one other thing. Here is a web page that's displaying dashboards, and it's, it's basically showing off a bunch of dashboards created uh, by different industries and different companies. These are these are perceived as great dashboards, but the thing to keep in mind is when I look at it, what is it missing? It's missing a narrative. It doesn't provide that kind of insight. That's what NLG does for you. It provides insight into your data that can't be, can't be achieved simply by looking at a dashboard. So you're trying to get that uh, kind of understanding. Finally, I want to show off where you can get some documentation. So as I click here, within the uh, narrative itself, just click on documentation. It'll launch into the browser. This is where you get the uh, the documentation on how to get started. And I think that's mostly it. I want to conclude by saying that now you know the secret to, to uh, accelerating data understanding with natural language. 
using augmented analytics in your Tableau dashboards. So ARIA NLG provides a no code required out of the box solution. The real question is, how long would it take to create a narrative like this manually? So how, how much time would it take a, a data analyst to do all this? So deploying this kind of artificial intelligence to your BI dashboards will allow your data analysts to focus on more critical tasks. Also, always remember that ARIA continues to add functionality and features. We just launched ARIA for Tableau version 3.0, and we're going to continue to add functionality and features as this disruptive technology continues to grow. Thank you.